আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ সম্মানিত ভাই বোনেরা আপনাদেরকে সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমি সাক um we were talking about young leadership and you could see you know in our studio we have very successful young brothers and they have achieved so much as well so i'm going to go straight back to on my left to said by said by tell me about before you became a very successful businessman and and other things how did you start your journey because a lot of our young people are watching now they don't have a dream they do probably don't have a good gcse so they don't know how to pick themselves up and say look i could do it so maybe your story may help them if you could say in bengali as well mix it up if you can it will be good <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so um I, i think i think first and foremost you know i'm not desire like you know you need a desire um khana that that forms the very core of what drives you uh to go out and dream and uh, create an ambition um and then from 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 that moment on it's how do i get to that goal uh so i remember um i've always wanted to be in business from when i was young and what inspired me is that i had to take lunch my mother gave me lunch one day to take to my dad and um <coughs> dad used to w- work in a warehouse down the road which which I'd never visited but I knew that he was working there. And I'm saying that you know dad's working 15 16 hours a day. You know um you know he was a huge role model to me my father. So I I I went along <coughs> took some lunch and and those days was in a carrier bag and mm. you when, you, when you say role model can you pick up one or two uh, things you really really liked about him? like the way he speaks yeah, so I, I mean, he does yeah, he can it'll be grateful absolutely absolutely so there, there is a there, there is a reason why i picked this story so i must have been around 12 or 11 12 years old so i was very young so i i knocked on this door in this warehouse i went down christian street mm. um i went and knocked on the door and there these guys this guy opened the door and as soon as he opened the door there was a stench of leather okay and he goes to me um how can i help you what do you want I'm I'm busy you know, I'm here to I've got my lunch for my dad you know his name is Mr Ali Raza etc So he goes to me oh he's right at the back so he opened the door it must have been at least 100 men all sewing cutting leather it was a tailor tailoring because back then ta- no, tailoring was 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 the industry to be in <coughs> So I took my dad lunch but as I walked up to him I was passing all these guys and everybody I was I mean I, I was giving my salam and and they were saying oraza mirfa oraza mirfa and they were very proud when they said i was thinking what's going on here you know but my dad's a bit of a celebrity mm-hmm. i got right to the end and i gave my dad his lunch and he was extremely happy but to me that was a real impact on me i thought wow this is a really tough environment eh fondo su logonta haroya ora bay tail um leather khatta eh khatta i remember seeing his finger he had a dent in his finger Anyway, as I gave him his lunch, he gave me a hug and a kiss. I was just leaving him. The guy next to me uh knocks me on on the shoulders and goes, "Oh, by the way, your dad's the best tailor here." So at that point I made a decision that whatever I do, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to ask you something. When you said he hugged you and kissed you, your dad g- hugged you and kissed you. Absolutely. You know, this is something missing in, in our community, honestly. This is something Do you know I, I, I can't explain you know my one of the things i th- i think i think sorry sorry to um in- interject um but i'm kind of second guessing what you're going to say there's a there's a lack of that within our yeah. families and i have seen that actually tell a lie i've seen it in some families but fortunately in our family mm-hmm. and all my extended family i'm not poor we've got i've got five sisters mashallah i've got my my dad's got you know I, i've got fufu fufa it's huge extended family mm-hmm. and there's a lot of love um but from a young age with my mum and my dad there was a lot of love we you know um my dad had very they had very little which was one of the reasons why i was ambitious but it was that day i made the decision that i was going to support the family that i was going to help my dad and how uh, but i took that challenge on with with both hands so from a young age i've had that drive in me 
and, and I think what drove me was the fact that I wanted to do well by my family. I wanted them to be happy. And to me, that is success in a very big way. Being able to support my parents, being able to play an impact the lives of my sisters, who are now, I've got four teachers in the family, mashallah. Um. Two of my sisters were Alima, Shuba and, and Nabila. Uh, I call them still my, my babies, because um, they really, because I got into business and they were very young, um, and they both went off to boarding school. They were both fully qualified Alimas within the English curriculum at the age of 18. They went to Jamia al Uh so, yeah, that's another, I, I could sp talk about my sisters uh, forever. B but there was a lo lot of love in the family, you know, and, and what my father gave me was an access to a world. He'd never say no to anything. I remember at the age of 12, 13, I think Abdul will remember back in the days, Fila trainers were massive. Yeah. They were 80 pounds back then. Can you imagine? My dad used to earn 200 pounds a week and he bought me an 80 pound pair of Fila trainers. So to me, that was extremely... Um, inspirational. It empowered me to go and look after him, um, to look after the family, etc. So, so, so I think from a young age it's instilled and it is, as you've said, very parent-led. However, I think when you make a decision at a young age, um, you make the best of the situation that you're in. Um, so uh, I agree that I really do wish for the fathers within our community and mothers to be extremely supportive because you're absolutely right. Um, it does start at that early age. I remember out of my all the kids would finish school at uh, three, four o'clock and they'd c come back and they'd be out hanging around the corners. Whereas with my parents, she wouldn't allow, my mum wouldn't allow that. You know, we went off to Fora, Fora they'd come home eat straight to bed. And my mother was a dedicated mother. My God, seven of us, can you imagine? You know, four foot four, I think that's how tall my mum is. Uh, so, mashallah, you know, may Allah bless, um, bless her and, and the amazing opportunities. I, I then went on, um, for me, that was it. The goal was set. I wanted to do business. Um, so I went and learned about business. I went to Hammersmith College. I did my uh, BTEC and my um, H&D in business and finance. And as soon as I understood the basics of business, I wanted to start working. So I remember I funded my, um, I also supported my own education. Um, I used to work in my first job, amazing, Billingsgate McDonald's. I used to work nights. I used to start at 12, finish at eight in the morning, go and sleep for seven, eight hours. I'd wake up and then I'd do go about my day. I used to do it at weekends, but I used to use that, I used to use that, that money to fund myself and to fund my ambition. And then basically that led to me working uh, towards the city. I then worked for various different uh, trading firms. I, I then got into recruitment at the age of um, uh, 20, I think it was 25, 26, after six years within um, IT headhunting that I decided the time was right. Um, and I started a business, and now I'm on to my third company. So, you know, you've been um, planning all the way, and I'm sure in, in your BBC show you also planned it out. I how, did. Did, how did it get wrong when you said 100 chicken? You go, those big <laughs> ones, man. Listen, it makes, it, it makes great TV, right? <laughs> okay. It makes great TV. No, I mean, the answer is, honestly, I'm, I'm not going to even defend it. <laughs> all I will say is that they said to us half a million people were coming to the South Bank. So if half a million people, I did a calculation because I was the chef that day and, you know, I, I'm not a chef. Um, and they do put you in those scenarios so mm -hmm. that those mistakes happen, so that you've got something to talk about in the boardroom and Sir Alan's got to say a few things. But I thought 100 chickens for half a million people. It's not even enough. To make pizzas, it's going to be shredded. Mm -hmm. Small but, pieces. But, you know, um, it, it, was, it was pretty amazing. These chickens turned out, they were like turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it was it was uh, it was it was it was. Anyway, a good you've laugh. done well though. You know, you've done well. You've you know, made us pride, but um, you know, I'm going to come to you because I know you, I can see you're emotional. You're another person who's really very linked with your dad as well. This is something missing. We've seen mm. in just before the Ramadan a few years ago, a young boy, Muslim boy, he killed his mother in in Brighton. Yeah. 
in a Roman road, something happened in other places. And it's so disgusting now. We can see these pe young people are into getting into drugs and mm -hmm. drinks and they're abusing their family. It's so wildly, it's, it's out of hand and you know, it's just gone out of hand. And now you guys are you know, talking about your parents like, wow, amazing. You know, it, little things change everything. Like his life changed when he kissed him and grabbed him. SubhanAllah, you know, it's, it's amazing. That's how mm -hmm. parents are. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, uh, like Saeed, I'm also very fortunate that my father, late father, um, he was a very, you know, I'm the eldest in my family, right? This is no thing. At the age of 15, 16, you know, my GCSE result wasn't full of A stars. And this is in the uh, early 90s, right? Somebody said to my father, you know, send him off to the restaurant. You know, he's the eldest, send him off. Although I was working from the age of 14, I was working on a Sunday. You know, I had a Sunday job, 15 pound, the whole day, right? Save 10 pounds, spend 5 pound. You know, give my mother the 10 pound, I saved myself 5 pound. 5 pound was my crisp, you know, my uh, snacks money. My father said, no. You know, what's he going to do in a restaurant? In fact, my father had a, a, a policy of not being involved with restaurant trade because of alcohol and all that kind of stuff. Plus, he said, you know, look at him, skinny, he's not going to be able to lift the handi, right? So he said, no, go off and do your study. Alhamdulillah, that was the big opportunity. Because if my father, like many fathers, right, said, no, for Abu he said, I'm getting old, send him to the factory, send him to the restaurant, or send him to some job, that would have been the end of my dream. Because I wanted to go to the university. I wanted to be the first, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to do, a, you know, my dad wanted me to do a law degree, I did a politics degree, okay, we had some issues there. But, you know, the amazing thing is, over the years, I, I felt whatever I'm doing, I wanted to please him. You know, like, you know, obviously you're a friend of mine, so you'll know. When I became a counsellor in 2006, it wasn't for me, I, I mean, I set myself goal, I wanted to do that. It was for my dad the proudest moment. Because his son, uh, you know, became a counsellor. Not me, become, it's my, I'm the so-and-so's son. Like when Saeed Bhai walked into the factory, Omukurfua. My father was also a tailor, a very good one. Ali Street in, in uh, Old Street, in the Jewish factory that he worked, he was the top. In fact, when my dad retired, the Jewish guy gave him the machine. He said, no one is good enough to work in that machine. You take it home with you. And we still have it. Even though my dad died in 2009, the machine is still with us. It's like a, a you know, legacy. But I want to share this story with you, which is the relationship. You know, we as children, uh, they're our guardian. And then when we become a bit older, they become our children in some respect. So my father was a very religious, pious man. You know, he had diabetes like every you know, Bangladeshi father. He refuses to give up Ramadan, fasting. So, you know, Abdul Qayyim Shah was trying his best, ring him in the house, said, you know, you know my father's name, uh, you don't have to, you know, he wouldn't do it. So in 2009, I came up, because obviously I used to do a TV show, and um, you know, I produced the Ramadan calendars you know, for the last 16 years as a leading campaign and, and so forth. So I did it on diabetes and health awareness. So I, I remember I planned this six months in advance that before Ramadan starts, I'm going to do a show. On my right hand side will be the Imam, on my left hand side will be a doctor. And I, I know my dad never used to miss one of my show. If he was alive tonight, he will be watching this, right? He said, two of my boys with you, know, you, with you watching it, you know, Saeed will say, it's like my son. So I thought, I'm going to teach my dad. You know, it's the al Alim, the Imam saying he doesn't have to fast. And the doctor saying he doesn't, you know, he needs to look after his health. Because just like my father, there's a lot of fathers out there, which are, you know, a bit stubborn. Eh? I want to fast, I want to do this. So I planned this in advance in 2009. And obviously, you know, two weeks before Ramadan, my father passed away. But I did the show, knowing that if my dad was alive, this is what I would have done. So I did the show to prove to other fathers out there, or mothers, or our Bangladeshi people, that you know, killing yourself for the sake of Ramadan is not the right thing to do. So in a sense, I turned it around. So I wanted to give my father something that he gave me, which is I want him to sort of live a longer life. So now I have two children, I want him to stay with us, but it, we never got that chance. So my thing is this, my father, it, had he not given me that break at 16, to go to college, go to university, pursue a life of what I wanted to do, the dream that I wanted to do, the politics, the community work, the, then I would not have been able to. You know, that me running my... Can you, can you just pick up one 
example of his, you know, like he'd remind you all the time, like some people could be, oh, I'm a fruit, or this and that and that, you know. Can you pick one thing up that breaks your... I think for me, when I hold my kid's hand, I always remember, you know, we used to go, we used to live in Brick Lane. So uh, most Sundays we used to go to Petticoat Lane to b get the fresh chicken. And it wasn't very common for Bangladeshi fathers to hold, hold their children's mm. hand, walk down the street. But even though it was a short distance from Brick Lane to Petticoat Lane Market, my father used to always hold my hand. How old were you then? I came to this country when I was about seven. So I was quite big. So that age, and then the nicest you know, feeling is that the holding the, f you know, is that he would lead me, not just because crossing the road, but walking down the street, holding hand. It was like... He's proud. He's proud. You know, uh, and that was to me the most... So when I hold my kid's hand walking down the street, I always sense, I don't know if they're feeling, you know, let me go, I want to run. But for me, is that giving. And I think we don't have many, much of that. And I don't, I, I don't know if it's a macho thing. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I still to this day... No, it could be a different way of showing your love, but you need to show it. You yeah. need to say it. You need it. to show no, it. You need to absolutely, say absolutely. It. absolutely. Yeah. But, but I, I, think, I think, you know, I, I, I don't think it's the majority. I do think that within... Um, one of the things that I like about our Bangladeshi community is that w there is a lot of love. There is. But they show um, it in a different way sometimes. And, and, but it's very important that, you know, that love exists. But also, you've got to try and give your children a um, an insight that they can achieve you've got to empower them you know so I remember my parents were extremely supportive you know so I, I went off a call can you take a call call aslam wa alaikum hello call aslam wa alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah yes sister where are you calling from mm -hmm. um, brother I'm calling from Surrey um, I just w just ringing really just to say um, thank you Jazakallah khair for the program uh, my son is uh, watching. I've got him sitting down. He doesn't really sit for many programs. I don't actually get them to watch too much TV, but um, he's very inspired by what the brothers are saying um, regarding, um, you know, a life of a career and working hard, etc. Um, and uh, I homeschool my children, so I, I have a wow. lot more scope to teach them my what sisters. I want and mm. take, take them in the direction I want to. But I just had a question. Um, I don't know if any of the brothers could answer. Is my my son at the moment? He's only young. He's only ten, um, but he's very already very tech savvy. You know that's his thing. Um, any suggestions um, for him in his life to how can he fully decide if that's what he wants to do? I know it's a very young age, but um, he's very opinionated already. So I just <laughs> wondered uh, if any advice you that's can give him. That's a good sign, and though. Just really, just to say thank you because he's really. Um, enjoying the show and he's uh, very glued to the screen so that's a good thing all right fantastic um uh, we got someone to say it go on bro uh no i i think it's very um i i think you should definitely embrace his his enthusiasm um uh, and i think he's got plenty of time to work out exactly which technology niche that he wants to get into uh, i would suggest that he looks at the internet of things because I do think that that's a very big future I think already uh, sister you can see a huge shift with smartphones and how you know um, it, it's kind of adding a lot of positivity to our lives making um, things easy and what, what's quite funny is that my mum uh, I, I bought her a laptop a, um, a tablet um, about four years ago, and oh my God, she does we, we've that. opened Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> She's YouTubing, downloading, WhatsApping. Um, my mother's got more things happening on the um, on her uh, iPad. So, so I think technology is something that you know uh, is is to be embraced. Uh, and and I think I think your son at this age um, can be an inspirational leader for other mm. Bangladeshi. Uh, children to follow down that route so so you know for him he's growing up in a very challenging time because technology uh, you know if, if used correctly can add huge value and if um, uh, used incorrectly can be a lot of waste of time etc so I think it's something that you need to manage as well uh, I think um, at this stage uh, it sounds like you're very together um, 
uh, mother. Uh, you've articulated his ambition extremely well. Uh, so I think you'd be a great leader to him. And I think you need to lead at this stage uh, for now until he gets to a stage where he realises that he can use the technology uh, to benefit his family, his community, society, etc. But he definitely sounds like a leader to me. So I'm going to, what's his name? Sorry. Ad, um, he already has his own YouTube channel. Uh, and he, <laughs> makes he makes videos about uh, different subjects. Um, he can be uh, vlogging or he can seems like I need choose to an item he, wish, he wishes to discuss yeah. that he's discovered something new. Or I, think we need to start, um, I, 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 yeah. I should, um, although we have an age limit of 15, 16, but I'll tell you what, um, in terms of inspiring, uh, I can't give away too much, but if you're, you and your son keep an eye out on BB Power, so if you go on um, on internet, it's called bbpower-inspiration.com or just type Inshallah. in bbpower100.com. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We have, at the moment, we've got an amazing young Bangladeshi girl who's only uh, 19, Mahima. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a group of brothers and sisters who set up the Inventors Club, which is trying to get young mm -hmm. British Bangladeshis interested in fintech, in, in design in um, okay. uh, software engineering and so forth. I we're going to go for a break. Yeah, so keep a, keep a look out on our website. We will make some announcement in February, and I think he will find some inspirational role models for in the IT industry in the future. Thank you, sister, for your call, and um, stay with us. Asalaamu Alaikum. Yeah, we're going to go for a break. Before the break, um, can I ask, um, you won't be here in the second round, so can I ask you, what's your ambition? Where do you want to see yourself in five years' time or ten years' time? Um, and, uh, we've got a clear... I've got a pretty clear, um, uh, you know, pr pr pretty clear objectives as a business, um, and I've got some pretty personal objectives as well. Um, I, I definitely want to. Uh, so, so Vortex Giving is something that I'm launching this year, um, and you know where we impact uh, communities around the world. Uh, so we currently are working with um, Human Relief on projects in Syria, um, um, you know, my brother's uh, uh, a very big donator into all those areas as well, so I've got a lot of support from the family, um, but also we, you know, it, it's, a cha it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a giving platform to many different charities, from cancer research to water aid, uh, you know, a couple of years ago we funded a project through water aid in, in Bangladesh where we um, uh, created um, wells, you know, for clean water and sanitation. Um, and also, you know, we've recently supported the Indian Ocean disaster. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a very broad giving platform. And, and that's where I really want to commute, because I, I, I don't see the point of existence if you can't, first, if you can't dream to achieve. But when you've achieved and you're achieving, you've got to, the other side of success is giving. Do you have, we only got two minutes for a break, so do you have any particular person you follow or do you have a role model like you say, I want to be like that? Do you have anything in your head? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know. Name um, that person for us. Yeah, so, I mean, listen, you know, I, it's a mix. You know, my uncle, um, who used to run Euro Valley, uh, uh, he's been a big inspiration, very successful businessman within the Asian community. Uh, so I have this imaginary board uh, that I counsel when I've got important decisions to make. So I have got my, my CFO who's, and my chairman, they sit in this committee, my uncle, and Richard Branson, uh, James Dyson. Those are the kind of role models that I look up to. Uh, and clearly I've got a lot of huge um, admiration, you know, one of the most um, greatest um, people to ever live, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, um, you know, I try and, and aspire to be Okay, we're going to be go for a break. Just one <coughs> word, if you want to say to our viewers before you go. Uh, I just wanted to um, say that please keep an eye on uh, BBP 100. Um, aspire to be um, uh, successful in whatever that that you do, and you know you have to be persistent until you achieve it. Inshallah. Thank you for your time with us, and um, I really you. enjoyed it. Dear viewers, stay with us. We're going to go for a small break, Inshallah, after the break, and then um, we we'll go back on again, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, <laughs> oh,